car come in this way. Yeah, this must be the tenth time that little heifer's run off. Well, I'll find her. No, you going back and rest. I may get her and cook her for supper. Yeah, too little. Chuck wagon sure gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. See ya. You know that brand. Drop your gun. Get off the horse. I'm sure we can solve it without using these. Chico, hey. Angelo. It would be a mistake to kill that man there. Woman, do not get in the way. You know the winter was hard. We need food, not a woman's foolish talk. I don't speak as a squaw. I've dreamed of the wolf, and the great prophet of the Paiute knows my name. We were sent to find the horses that graze these mountains. Two of us are on foot already. I left the herd a day's ride to the north, and I have spare horses. Those two are broken to the white man's taste, but they're yours if you'll have them. The last one isn't broken yet. But I'd like to trade him to you for that heifer. Well, ma'am, that's not a very good trade, but you got a deal. You know, are we near Cartwright land? You're on it, ma'am. I'm Horse Cartwright. Well, I've heard that the Cartwrights are honorable men and friends of the Paiute. I was on my way to your ranch to sell my horses. I did not know who you were. No harm done. Would you trade more beef for the horses that they'll catch? Absolutely. You get them? Send word to me at our roundup camp, and I'll meet you back here, and we'll discuss the details. I am called Bear Hunter. You are welcome at our camp anytime. Gone a bit sore. No, no. How'd you injure that shoulder, anyhow? Well, to tell you the truth, I got a bit careless trying to break that horse. I got myself thrown. It's just a cut, but I think it might be trying to get infected. You know, we might ought to have a doctor take a look at that. 
Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. And the nearest one's in Virginia City. Well, I don't... Uh, I don't think I could make it that far right now. Well, we can't camp here, and that's for sure. It'll be freezing here in another hour or so. We can go on down to Low Country. I know a good place to camp down here. Well, I'll be grateful to you for the company, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Miss O'Donnell, my name is Hoss. Aaron. Here, you rest a spell. I'll go fill this candy, and then we'll be on our way. Fine. Shoulder bother you? A little. How hard did that old pony throw you, anyhow? Not hard enough to break anything, but I don't think I'll be forgetting him for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm mad not. Listen, I'll fix something to eat. It ain't gonna be too tasty, but it'll be filling. I got some jerky and some beans back here. Well, wait, wait. Why don't I just try to catch us a dinner? Like what? Pheasant or quail or both. Well, that's fine with me, but I ain't seen nothing running or flying. Well, it never hurts to try. It's going to be interesting. Is there anything I can do to help? Just keep your fingers crossed. Hey. Oh. Let me take a look at that shoulder. Ethan. Boy. That thing ain't infected. It's a sure trying. You know, maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we ought to keep going, huh? Well, I don't think my horse is up to it. I've been pushing him pretty hard. The fact is that I, I'm not up to it. Yeah, well, you sure can't go out catching any game, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't take much muscle to set a snare. Huh. We're going to need a fire. Right. I'm aiming for Sue Stew. Sue Stew? What's that? Rabbit. Oh. Of that jerky, didn't it? <laughs> you know, this is the first coffee I've had since mine ran out last winter, and it smells like nectar. You said you wintered with the pilot. You lived with Indians all your life? Only the best part of it. Did the Sioux take you when you were a baby? Uh, no, no, I was, um, I was taken to the Sioux as a child by my father. Well, when my mother died, he had no idea how to go about raising a daughter. <laughs> So he raised me like a son. I took to it like a duck to water. I still do, I guess. Why did, uh, why did your Paul take you to the Sioux? Well, he was looking for freedom. And when he discovered the Sioux, he thought he'd found it. It's funny, I never thought of freedom as being that hard to come by. My parents had to pay a price for it. You see, they were raised in Ireland under the British occupation. You were born in Ireland? No, I was born on a ship. They wanted the first land I'd see to be a free one. Well, then we came ashore at Massachusetts. And there was a sign in every window saying, no Irish need apply. So we headed west. How did you get with the pilot? And what's this thing about a prophecy or whatever it was? I've been talking too much. You're good company, Hoss. I'll just take these down and clean. Here, here. Oh. Hey, you got a fever. Come on, Aaron. Get in. It's all right. You're gonna right. have to get some rest. Come on. It's, it's really all right, Hoss. I just hope it's not too late. Let me fix this bed down for you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Just take it easy. Relax. Thank you. Here. I'll be fine. I really will be fine. All right. Let me get you some cover. You're going to have to keep that night air off. There. That ought to keep the chill off. I promise you, if it is a fever, it'll be gone by the morning. I hope so. Thank you, Hoss. 
You get some rest. Red man, white man. Red blood, white snow. Heron. Heron. You're going to be all right. You hear? You're going to be all right. I'll, I'll get you to a doctor. I'm not glad to see you, Paul. Her name's Erin O'Donnell. What is she, some kind of white Indian? What happened to her? She got bucked off by a horse. She's got an infected shoulder. It's bad. She's running a high fever. Figure she needs a doctor or a medicine man. Oh, shut up. Give me a hand. Got to get her to a doctor. <laughs> I'm sure she's felt better. She sleep? You ever try to sleep through having a shoulder cauterized? She survived that. Now she's got to beat the fever. What do you think, Doc? We'll know by morning, one way or the other. I'll send my wife out to stay with her tonight. Someone should be with her. I'll go on up there right now. If she gets through this, she'll be laid up for a while. Caused you a great deal of trouble. Oh, you're not to be sorry about it. Don't be silly. The main thing is you get some rest and get to feeling better. I'd forgotten how good linen feels next to your skin. I wonder if you'd open the window just a little. Erin, it's, it's a fever that's making you feel uncomfortable. It, it, I don't think you need the draft. It's not the fever, it's just being closed in. The fact is, I just don't like being closed in. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it this time. Oss, if you don't do it, I will. Hey, wait a minute. Settle down. I'll open the window. That, that settle it. Well, I must say, you've got a mind of your own, haven't you? Oscar, right. What an uncommon man you are. How have you managed to survive in this savage world? Like it? 
I've forgotten how it feels to wear a dress. If you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll go and change. I hope I remember how to put this on. Oh, come in, Mr. Murray. Afternoon, Ben. Afternoon. Huh? Hi, Murray. How are you? Well, well, awesome. Well, I'd like you both to meet my niece, Mary Beth Johnston. Hi, Mary. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky. Mary Beth's going to be visiting us for a month or so. Well, isn't that nice for you? Uh, sit down, ladies. Oh, thank you, Ben. Come on, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Any ladies like some coffee? Well, that'd be real nice, Hoss. Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I... Isn't Joseph here? No, no, he's with the Ronda. Oh, I'd so hope Mary Beth could meet both your sons. Ben... And he oh, says, uh... your other son's name is Little Joe. Well, I think that's just darling. Yeah, well, you'll meet him sometime. Right now, I got to talk over some business with Ben. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the roundup, is it? No, no, it's coming along fine. And uh, if we want it to stay that way, we got to decide what we're going to do about those Paiutes. Paiutes, we were near here. Besides that, they're, you're just after some wild horses anyhow. They'll come back. They've had a taste of good beef, and they'll come back for more. <sighs> Unless we let them know that they're not wanted. Clint, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. We haven't had any Indian trouble here for a long time. That's what my brother thought, until he and his family were wiped out at Brinker's Ford. Oh, Aaron. Miss O'Donnell, this is Mr. and Mrs. Murray and their niece, Miss Johnson. I do. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. How'd you do? I think we better talk privately. Come in. Come on, have a seat. Well, that's a nice little dress. You make it yourself, my dear? No, I, um... Never mind. A few little alterations here and there, and it'll do nicely. Well, I'm afraid I don't know how to sew. You should be grateful to the Cartwrights for giving you a chance to return to civilization. Well, I am very grateful to the Cartwrights. But I came here from as old a civilization as your own. And an honorable one. I uh, suppose those shoes are... comfortable. Oh, yes, very, very. Is it true you all have to... Chew the leather soft to make them comfy? Sometimes. As it happens, these were a gift from my uncle. Your uncle? Yes, Bull Buffalo. He was a Sioux medicine man. Oh. It must be very difficult for a white girl to uh, protect herself among people who buy and sell women like animals. Miss Murray. No, it's not hard. When young men brought strings of war ponies as a bride price, my father had only to turn them down politely. My father never had to depend for an income on how many horses he could trade for me. How fortunate for your father. <laughs> Come along, Mary Beth. Yes, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Clinton, I would like to go home. <laughs> oh, Hoss, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. For her. <laughs> I saw the way Hoss looked at her. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. She wouldn't mind marrying one of the Cartwrights, that's for a fact. You probably don't mind having a bunch of Indians hanging around your place, but... It sure makes it hard on my family. Well, I'm real sorry, Mr. Murray. But if Oz wants it that way, that's exactly the way it's going to be.
Well, I'm glad you can laugh. You weren't upset by that. Oh. Paul, she can take care of herself. Don't you worry about that. Oh. Darling people, my father would have called the Murrays. They're the kind that would have enjoyed the Sandy Wash massacre. Yeah. Indian women and children shot, bodies left in the snow. What a needless tragedy that was. I turned and left the Dakotas. I ran like a thief. I'd best go up and rest. Well, you must be tired. Yeah. We'll call you for dinner. Oh, thanks again for the dress. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I forgot about the shoes. I like these shoes. But Murray won't be so secret. Oh, you know Murray. Yeah. Sees Paiutes under every rock. No, no. He just saw the whole Paiute nation riding over the hill in full war paint. Oh, baloney. There was a bear hunter and a couple of other braves now. I know, I know. But he thinks she's going to bring a whole lot more around. Well, Aaron was raised with the Sioux. Wintered with the Paiutes, so it's understandable that a few of them may come around to say hello or something. But Murray can't really believe that they're going to put together a war party, can he? Oh, yes, yes. He believes that. And he thinks that they're going to steal all our beef. And he just can't... Forget what happened at Brinkus Ford when he lost part of his family. But that's only half my concern. The other half is Aaron. Oh, she's all right, Paul. But for whatever reason, she ran away from the Dakotas. She left the Piutes. And now the first time she meets anybody outside our family, she runs into hatred and prejudice. And... You think you... You think she might try to run away again, huh? Well, once you start running, it gets easier every time. I'll tell you this. If she tries, I'll do everything I can to keep her from it. I'm not surprised. Hoss, don't you be surprised if you wind up being hurt. Paul, I know you're concerned, but you needn't be. I know how I feel, and I know what I want. And what's troubling you? Well, it's not what Murray and them like him think of her, but it's what she thinks of us that concerns me. Hey, you this, Aaron. You looked at a lot of horse flesh, but that little pony of yours is one of the prettiest ones I ever saw. That is the best horse that I ever stole. Stole? Well, I stole his mother when she was in foal with him from a crow's camp. That's when the Sioux gave me the cool feathers that you saw, as a sign that I had medicine. Speaking of medicine, you never did tell me about that prophecy. What was that all about? The Paiute prophet said that I was the wolf's child, born to fight and die for the Indians. You believe that? When I was with the Sioux, I did. But now I'm not so sure. What are you sure of? I'm sure of one thing. I'm tired of being a curiosity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm sure you do. When I look at you, I see a man with wisdom, of great strength, who prefers to be gentle. on moving straight ahead instead of up and down you'll get where you want to go faster oh that's funny that's very funny that may not be the meanest jughead i've ever seen but he'll do well maybe you haven't appealed to his better nature 
Oh, is that what you did? Just before he threw you? You made your point. But it did give me time to consider my mistake. I think I got his number now. Oh, would you mind letting me in on it before he kills me? Well, you might be able to talk me into it. My father got along with the Sioux very well. Probably because he never tried to change them. Hmm. Well, what did you folks do when the Sioux were moved to the reservation? Well, my father had died by then, and I, uh, I started horse hunting. There's something you got a right to know. I was arrested by the army after the Brinker's Fort raid. They put you in jail? Oh, no. Into a hospital storeroom. Manacle to a cot. No windows. No light. No air. And what charge? I never did know exactly. I never saw a courtroom or a jury or a judge or the officer who ordered it. I think it had something to do with the prophecy. Well, they had no legal right. I was in no position to argue the point, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, please. I'm going to look in on Jughead. It ain't hard to figure out why she don't like being cooped up, is it? She hardly touched a dinner. Yeah. I reckon she can't get her mind off the little hungry youngins in the Paiute camp. Yeah. Although it's spring, there should be plenty of game for food. Oh, yeah, small game. That ain't a, enough to feed a tribe, no, just rabbits. What if? If we're that short of food in the mountains, we may be in for some serious trouble. Well, we're that short. Of course, they got the cattle that they'll get from the horse trade, but that ain't enough either. <sighs> Wish you could feed them all. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go ahead and see how she's doing with that gray jug he had. Well, the gray that you traded for the habit? Yeah. You better stay away from him. Candy says he'll chew your arm off. I think I'll go ahead and see if she's all right. Figuring on taking a little night ride? No, I'm just getting acquainted. I've been working with him a little every day. Is music a part of your system of getting acquainted? I mean, you were whistling. Oh, I guess it is. Sort of a catchy little tune. Is it Irish? I. When I was a child, we'd sit by our fire in the evenings, and my father used to sing all the old songs. And the rolling hills of Ireland would spring up before my eyes. That's uh, downright poetic. You should have heard my father. He was a teacher and a proper poet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've always had a real tough time with words. It's, as a matter of fact, I'm having a heck of a time right now. There's something I need to tell you. And it's... What I'd like to say is... Hoss, don't be confused by a pretty spring day. Oh, I, I ain't confused, and I, I hope you're not. Even in a dress, I don't fit in your world. Aaron. Let me tell you something. You ain't exactly the best judge in the world of how a man feels, and particularly this one. I think you're as pretty as a picture in that dress, and you will fit in my world just fine. I don't know, Hoss. I just don't know. 
Maybe, maybe I'm like Nightwind. I've always run free. I mean, he, he's never even been in a stall before, nor on a picket line. Aaron. I mean, not even at night. All I'd ever have to do was wake him up and turn, and he'd be there. Aaron. Even when it was so dark, I could hardly see him. I think that's why I called him Nightwind. Aaron, please. There's something I gotta tell you, and, and you gotta listen to me. I want to protect you. And I want to look after you. And I want to make sure that nothing ever happens to you again, like happened up in the Dakotas. I want to. I want to be near you and with you. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Boss, I was looking for your paw, but as long as you're here, I'll talk to you. And no apology for interrupting. What do you want, Mr. Murray? I just saw a stinking Paiute skulking around the Roundup camp, Hoss. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk, Mr. Murray. I invited that Indian here. We're going to trade him some beef for some horses. You're a fool, Hoss. My best advice, I think, to you is to go on home. Well... Maybe, uh, maybe this will interest you. Wired a friend of mine in the cavalry up the Dakotas about this O'Donnell woman. My well, man, she's, she's an insurrectionist. She's a traitor. She, she's worse than a squaw. Aaron. is going to be my wife, Murray. And you best keep that in mind from here on out. Take me a couple of days to cut my stock out of the herd. Just make sure that he keeps his pet Indians away from camp until then. Go on, get out of here. Father wonders who his son is going to marry, but you, you should find an interesting way to tell me. Yeah, or I got dead at that. Hey, uh, you still got some of that good French champagne? I, I think a celebration's in order, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure is. Don't worry about Murray. He's just an unpleasant man. Unpleasant? That's a mild word for it. What makes him hate me? It's irrational. It's, it's become a disease with him. Are you afraid of him, Aaron? Yes. I guess I am. Well, you don't have to be from now on out. The world is full of Murrays. All my life. Each time I've met him, each place. I've been scared of all of them. Well, that was before. Yeah. Come on, let's get this champagne. If you don't mind, I'll be along in just a minute. Anything you say. It's all right. You can come in now. I know you're there. They did not know. 
One more reason why you should leave them. And you are not like they are. My father was once. I can learn. To live within walls, behind locked doors, where you cannot feel and smell the change of the wind, you would wither and choke on bitterness. I am not an Indian. You are more Indian than you are white. The men who were just here, they know that. And they hate you for it. He wants to kill you for helping the Paiute. He would have to kill my husband first. You have no husband. You must have heard what Hoss Cartwright said to his father. I heard. But I did not hear you. Then hear me now. He is to be my husband. Do not forget the prophecy. know what to say. Hey, how's the show? Are you ready to go for that ride? <laughs> ride? Yes, ride. After two weeks indoors, I'm raring to go. Well, good, let's go. Move. Well, we'll deliver the cattle tomorrow. There's a big box canyon back up north of here. I'll put them in there so they won't get mixed up with your horses. Woman? Yeah. My wife. It is hard to think she will leave my people. Well, she won't ever be any farther away than she has been the last couple of weeks. Very far away. A strange land to her. She does not belong there. She can belong there. No. Your people hate her. We believe she has been touched by the spirits. She told me all about the prophecy, but maybe if she's married to a white man, it won't come true. It will find her. Until then, I wonder if she would be happier with those who dishonor her or with those who love her. I love her, Bear Hunter. Get 
cattle together out of that herd. Sit down. Right. We got big trouble. It's Murray. It's Murray. He told his crew he was going to take uh, some picked men and go pay the Paiutes a visit. He knows where that camp is, boy. I better get out there. Right. Uh, Candy, you and I will ride up to Murray's place. If he's not there, we'll meet you at the camp. All right. I'll get my things. I'll get your horse. Karen, maybe you better stay here. The Paiute wouldn't be there, hostile one for me. Count four. Four men, four rifles, and bullets to waste. Until you came, we were three. Only two rifles. Now we are five, and we have four rifles. We'll have two more pretty soon, Paul and Candy. If they are not here soon, they may find only bodies. Yeah, I know what you mean. If they got one man up on that high country up there, they'd have us right in their sights, wouldn't they? They will get one there. On the other hand, if one of us got up there, we'd have them in the same position, wouldn't we? I'm going to try for that ring. Hoss! Hoss! Hoss, they'll kill you! That's what they're trying to do now. You stay here. Hoss! I care for him, Baron. I could have written for help. He would not let you do that. I think he fears the prophecy. I think you also fear it. That's why you left the Sioux and the Paiute because no, of it. No, I do not fear it. The prophecy was an old man's muttering. It has no more meaning than the wind. Just don't nay. I'm going to divert their fire. are going to tell me what to do. Murray! Grab it!
He wants my weapons to be buried with me. Wait. He's gonna have to wait a long time, because you're gonna be all right. You hear? Don't waste precious time. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna take you back home, you hear? I can't... I can't go back there without you. I, I can't go back alone. Oh, no, boss. She's gonna run off and leave me. Now I wish to God she had. <laughs> 